Hi, I'm Caroline Bateman, and we've learned recently that schools are going to delay opening after Christmas. So I've put together this video of ideas to help students to thrive and parents survive, because this, this is very difficult. And like all parents, I hoped that schools would just open as normal after Christmas, but we now know this isn't going to be the case. And as I have already created a lot of resources to help parents and students with school closures, I thought well, I'll make this video to help people find those resources. Now, you'll notice the uh, title doesn't say anywhere that this is for dyslexic children or children that struggle or children with learning difficulties. And the reason for that is a lot of what I'm gonna show would help absolutely anybody. But full disclosure, what I normally do, uh, and most people that watch my videos know, my channel is all about helping children that have learning difficulties. And my expertise is in dyslexia because I'm dyslexic, my children are dyslexics, and I teach a lot of dyslexic students. But very often, the technology and techniques that I introduce will help any student. And that's the case for an awful lot of what I'm gonna to show today. And all of us parents need to help each other out because it is not easy supporting learning from home. So my objective is not to show you how any technology works or to explain any particular techniques. What I want to do is raise awareness of what is available and then direct you to where to find out more. I've already created eBooks, I've already created informative web pages and I've already created videos. So this video is all about pointing you to the information that can help you. So where you look will depend on the type of information. So for eBooks and for web pages, I would recommend you go to my web page. Now I should also say that I will make all these slides available. So if these slides are available, uh, if you download them from the details below, all the links will be live so you can click on them and go straight through to the information. But for eBooks and web pages, if you go to my website, which is achievenow.org.uk, if you go into resources, new layout, you find all these different resources. And if you click on read more, it will take you in and give you more information. So text-based information will be found on my web page, but videos are found on my YouTube channel. And here is the address of my uh, YouTube channel. Again, if you have the slide, you click on it, it will take you straight there. But also YouTube has functionality. So after I've recorded this, what I'll do is I'll put links at the top of this video that you can click on to go into different videos. So I hope that will help you find this information. And because I do have so many videos within my YouTube channel, I have this little infographic that helps you, guide you through um, how to find the most pertinent videos for you. But if you have more time in your hands, and I know I personally have a lot more time on my hands because normally between Christmas and New Year, I you know have a lot of people over, so I'm forever tidying and cooking and clearing up, or I'm out visiting people and we're just stuck at home at the moment. So I think it is a good time to, to learn how to support dyslexic learning, be it a parent or a teacher, these webinars could really help you. And they're free, they each last around an hour. And this one really talks about the technology that is available, and it talks about technology in all these areas. And this video webinar talks about why use technology. So it talks about the why behind it, and the two videos or the two webinars really mesh together, and they, they support one another. So for a full introduction to how to set children up for academic success, I would recommend, if you have time, watching these two webinars, but obviously if you're busy homeschooling, you won't have time to do that. So as parents, how can we support our children? Well, it all depends a lot on what support the schools provide. And some schools are providing amazing, brilliant um, resources. So great, you know, online learning, 
as long as you've got the devices and the internet access. But I'm very aware that other schools don't and that breaks my heart. The disparity um, between what different schools provide is, is vast and it is incredibly sad because the disparity between children who were getting an education and aren't in this time I think is very sad but I won't attempt to solve that horrible problem here. A lot of what I'm going to show you does require devices and internet access but there are a few things that you can do if, if you don't have them. But it also depends on the time. One of the reasons why devices and internet is good is because if parents don't have time to sit down and work through a workbook then you can have programs and solutions that will do that for you. Now the support also depends on the age of the child and the specific needs of the child. That's the reason why I have the infographic, it's to help you try and find the most pertinent information for your child given their specific needs. Now when it comes to age, it's pretty self-explanatory that somebody in primary school would need very different support at home to somebody in secondary school. So I won't bother reading these out, but regardless of the age, if we can use this time when schools aren't open to improve self-esteem, develop a love of learning and encourage reading for pleasure, that is time really well spent. And I'm try, going to try and point you to solutions for as many of these areas as I can. And for where I don't have solutions already, I don't have videos or web pages or eBooks, I'm gonna show you where you can find really helpful information for free. So how to help primary age children. Now, first of all, it's all about helping them learn to read. And we as parents are in a great position to support our children learning to read. And I've created this ebook, Fantastic Resources to Help Children Learn to Read. And I've created a number of videos. This is an introduction of why tech is good. And then this in particular talks about why I went for a tech route rather than a paper-based route to help my children. Whereas this book will tell you about paper-based and technology. And also um, I then have a video where I compare or introduce, I should say, lots, I think seven different intervention solutions. So these are solutions that will help students overcome difficulties with reading. So if you want to help your child in this area, this ebook and these videos should help. Then when it comes to encouraging reading for pleasure, this is a really important area. I personally, as a parent, when my children were, long, were young, I concentrated on this area, whereas really this is just as important or more important. And statistics show that children that read for pleasure do so much better academically than children that don't. So it's really worthwhile trying to instill a love of reading. And I have created a book that has lots of ideas and how to instill a love of reading, even into dyslexic children who tend to hate reading. Not always, but they tend to. Um, I've also created a video, how to help develop a love of reading, and these complement one another. They're not repetitions. This explains a lot of the psychology behind it, and this gives you ideas on how to encourage reading. This introduces the whole idea of why technology can be really helpful when learning to read. And this one here, um, Kindle Fires, I have seen so many children really improve their enjoyment of reading and then go on to improve their reading through using Kindle Fire devices. Now, you can do a lot of the, of the functionality that's very dyslexia friendly on iPads or other Android tablets, and that is all explained in this video here. And then also preparing, preparing for spelling tests, not as necessary now because our children aren't having spelling tests, but it, if it is something you want to help them do, then I have a web page that talks about how to improve spelling test results. And I have all the sight words there. So you could concentrate while schools are closed on helping them develop all the sight words. And I even have a Quizlet that you can use with your children. So it just 
saves you creating it yourself to help them learn sight words. And if they do learn sight words, it does make things a lot easier because those sight words are used so often. But I won't go into any more detail now, but that's an overview of all the different eBooks and videos and web pages that I would go to if I had to support primary learners from home. But it is worth saying, while parents can really help children learn to read, just because you can read yourself doesn't mean you're qualified to teach reading. And in this ebook, I list some free online resources that help parents or educators learn how to teach reading. And there are some really fab resources here that I would recommend. And if you're in a position where you don't like technology or you don't have the devices or you uh, you want to sit next to your child and work through a workbook, um, I talk about these two paper based solutions, which are excellent and people get fantastic results. They are incredibly cost effective. They didn't work very well with my children, but that's a lot to do with my children and the fact that they're not very compliant and they didn't want to work with me. So I outsourced it to technology to help improve family harmony. But lots of people have great success with these. And this is a fab a Facebook group of parents that are going through these um, workbooks and using other technology and techniques and they support one another and they ask questions and whenever a student finishes then they get the, the, the picture on the top on the banner of the the Facebook group so I really recommend that and this is another lovely little Facebook group where a, a very experienced teacher gives lovely ideas on how to teach things like you know b and d and uh, you just really common mistakes that our, our younger children make she she gives you lovely tips on on how to overcome problems and how to teach children so i really would recommend that when it comes to secondary students i cannot emphasize enough how important it is that they learn to touch type and i have playlists of videos teaching these are the advantages these are how you improve your grades if you can touch type this is how you do better in exams if you can touch type this is how you organize your work what i plan on doing in the next week or two is to create videos to help you teach touch typing at home and I really tried with my children. I tried to help them to learn from home. It didn't work for me. I had to book them on a course. And because of that, I also do teach courses. But given all the tips that I'll give you, if your child is not um, good at working with you, does resist, then I do have a February half term course booked and I have an early bird discount. So if by the time they go back to school, they haven't mastered typing, I would book them on that course because it is the most cost effective, efficient way of learning to touch type and then going on and utilizing those benefits in school. And really that is more so for students with learning difficulties because they can type in exams. Whereas if you don't have a learning difficulty, you can have all the benefits on getting better grades in homework, but not in exams learning how to learn. I think schools are great at teaching biology and history and maths, but they don't necessarily teach our children how to learn. And so I've written a quick ebook about um, how to revise and tips for revision. And I've also got this information is uh, 10 tips to improve grades. And not all of those would be pertinent for school closures. One of them, one of the areas I talk about is access arrangements, which if schools are closed, you might not be able to um, have that com com conversation with teachers right now, but you might be able to start it via email. And then something else that is absolutely brilliant for children is if they get used to using electronic textbooks. So rather than being held back by any struggling with reading, and again, this is for dyslexic students, they can listen, they can hear their textbooks read to them. And it really does help them to succeed in all areas if they're not always relying on their reading skills in order to learn. When it comes to solutions for any age, um, 
anything we can do as parents to help improve our children's self-esteem it is just really worthwhile and to that end I have a web page and I have a video that explains how you can build confidence. Uh, John Hicks also has videos on, on building self-esteem and I include one of his videos in my YouTube channel where I've just got a, a playlist of really helpful videos that I've found that other people have done. Um, when it comes to enjoying learning, for dyslexic students, what we find is the way schools teach does not suit their learning styles. And so students can wrongly believe, well, I'm thick, I'm not very clever, because they don't learn through the old chalk and talk method. They learn in different ways. Uh, but if they could watch videos of great presenters explaining their subjects and they could stop and rewind, they would they do so much better so it's helping them see that you're bright you just learn in a different way and that's where school closures can be a gift because you can say okay what interests you what energizes you what are you enthusiastic about well find out more about it and you you teach me or create a powerpoint slide or do a presentation for the family anything we can do to help our children excel in learning is and enjoy it is time well spent. So I'm coming to the end now. I just want to say that I haven't covered all these areas. So I've highlighted where I have created resources that should be able to help you. But I haven't done anything on maths and times table. I plan to, but I just haven't created videos. I haven't created eBooks on that yet. Um, when it comes to learning how to learn, and learning to revise an exam technique. Currently, I tend to do that on one-to-one -one because while there is some commonality, it really helps to find out what the particular student finds helpful. So I tend to do that more with consultancy, but I, I, I do have some information there. So if you've still got questions, if there's an area that you think, well, I wish you had an ebook on that, I wish you created a video on that, then please um, email me or put it in a comment on YouTube. I do read them all and I would happily, um, you know, if quite a few people ask me for the same thing, I will make that a priority when I come to creating videos. Uh, but I am not the font of all knowledge. And if I've got a question, if I feel like, oh, I don't know what I do here, then I go onto Facebook and I have particular groups where I pose questions and I ask the members for questions. And I'm, it, this is a really supportive community. We do tend to help one another. And I have created a video on how to create a Facebook account. And you don't have to hook up with friends and you know see inane posts about what people have eaten and where they've gone on holiday. But you can just use it to get fantastic free resources and advice. So I would recommend a Facebook group if I haven't got a resource and you don't know where else to go, then that's a really good question. So how can I help going forward? I would download the pertinent information. Um, if you download the slides, then you'll have all the links so you can go and find stuff. Um, if you have, once you've downloaded that information, any more questions, then book a remote consultancy. It's very affordable. It can be done remotely. I can record it so you can go back and watch it again. But it's very, very cost effective and efficient because very often I point you to videos I've already created. So you're not having to pay for my time. But if you still have questions after that, then you get in touch with me. Um, also, I did say that I have my typing course. It is a completely unique typing course. It doesn't just teach touch typing. It teaches you how to use typing to get better grades. So if you're finding that you're not able to help your children, as I couldn't help my own kids touch type because they weren't interested, I have these different courses that you can book on. My February half term one is only for secondary age students because I do believe you need the full summer holiday if you have primary age students. But I will be creating quite a lot of videos in the near future to support parents teaching touch typing, particularly to secondary school students, because I don't think by, well, primary school students are going back to school 
on the whole, but I don't think the 18th of January when students are going back to school is long enough for most primary school students to be proficient touch typers, but it's a great window of opportunity for secondary age students. And that comes to the end. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I hope you find the information useful. And, and if you have anything else that you'd like me to create videos on, just ask in the comments below. I hope the 18th of January comes really quickly and that our children can get the education that they need. If you found this video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you could give it a thumbs up. Um, by liking it, you help other people find it. By uh, subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell button, you'll be informed when I create new videos. And I plan to use the time that I have because my kids don't need me to uh, educate them anymore. I'm going to be creating videos to support parents. I wish you the very best of luck and a happy, healthy 2021.